especially when you're not going a, a long distance. How about that van? Nope. No. To honor St. Francis of Assisi. The old town is right here next to the visitor center as well. The <laughs> We've gone astray. We're on a rim trail, but there's another trail. That huge span, time span. of time. Five feet in, oh. and I already cut my toe. 900 years ago. Sounds like it's about due. The area that we saw was like a multi-family. It's our anniversary. Those are our two favorite places so far. What were you thinking? <laughs> Dirty-minded people. This little guy is waiting for us to put his fresh nectar out there. He is waiting patiently. <laughs> that is so cute. When you're planning a trip to go do some sightseeing, I found if you use this RV trip wizard in advance, you can go ahead and put everything in there and you can sort them around and arrange them. Then all you gotta do is get on your RV Life app, plug it in one at a time and go from place to place. You can change it if you want to. You don't have to have RV directions or you can just keep it that way. Uh, for the most part, that's not going to really make much difference, especially when you're not going a, a long distance. We're going to see how it works. About ready, Michelle? Did I hear you out here this morning emptying the tank? Yeah, we did. Thanks. Awesome. All right. Well, I think I'm going to drive again today. Have we got everything in there? Mr. Hummingbird. <laughs> just went up to eat. We're going up where it's cooler. Yes, we are. We're going up to Flagstaff. And I think we're going to see if the visitor center is open first. So we're going to go there first and take it from there. We've got a ton of places that we can visit. Right. <clears throat> Not sure how much we can see. It's like a multiple day adventure up there. In yeah, Black it would Staff. be. You want to let them see this? Oh. I forgot that you can actually, like, we're going to pick the visitor center. We got RV directions, but we can swipe it over to automobile directions. An hour and three minutes. Well, this will be our first time in Flagstaff as well. Yeah. Lots of firsts here in Arizona. Hello, Michelle. What? I still think we should get one of these. No. Nope. Not to full time in, no. Can't do it. Nope. Okay. Part time. We'll get us a home base and we'll do that part of the time. Maybe someday in the far distant future. Yeah, far. far distant future. How far? Far. How about that van? Nope. Are we more excited about where we're going or where we're going to get to eat today? Every time we go somewhere, it seems like we get excited about where we're going to eat. We talk about where we're going to go and then we get in the car. Where are we going to eat today? Michelle's got her uh, bionic eyes going on her pie eyes. <laughs> San Francisco Peaks right in front of us. Well, the highest summit of one of them, I think, is Humphreys Summit, and it's like over 12,000 feet. I think close to 13. Fun fact, why are they called the San Francisco Peaks when they're in Arizona? I don't know. Why are they, Michelle? Why? 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 Okay, here is why. In 1629, uh -huh. 147 years before San Francisco, California received that name, Spanish friars founded a mission at the Hopi Indian Village in honor of St. Francis, 65 miles from the peaks. 17th century Franciscans at Rabi Village gave the name San Francisco to the peaks to honor St. Francis of Assisi, the founder of their order. Did they just call somebody Assisi? No. Oh. They're in the Velocity. Where'd you go? Stop at Jimmy John's first, real quick, because I'm freaking fast. He's weird. That was quick. First stop we're gonna make here is at the visitor center. Since it's open, we'll ask somebody here to make sure there's something we're not missing, make sure we get uh, 
the best out of our trip here, I guess, I'm trying to say. Looks like the old town is right here next to the visitor center as well. This trail is only supposed to take about 30, 35 minutes, depending on how fast you walk, I guess. But normally it was like $15 a piece, or yeah. a piece to come in here. But since the visitor center is closed, it's free. Yeah, we're waiving <laughs> the entrance fee. I'll paint with colors and I'll sing until my arms give out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. And I will leave my windows open. A great place to go at a time like this where mm -hmm. You know, look, there's some people here, but <laughs> far and few between. Oh, I will open up my eyes so I can see the light. Oh, and I'll try to spread my wings so I can fly. Oh, and the darkness starts to fade. Feels like things are gonna go my way. I'm gonna let the sun shine in the day. I have to admit, I was not <laughs> expecting that spectacular view. That was amazing. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that either. They call the Sinagua tribe that used to live here in these que uh, in the I about said it again cleft dwellings <laughs> in these cliff dwellings. Wasky wabbit. Uh, <laughs> Wasky. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the <laughs> we've gone astray. Say rascally. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cliff. No, you got me saying it. Here we Seriously, are. Seriously, I did not do that on purpose. <laughs> cliff dwellings. Right Thank back you. there. <laughs> Sinagua natives. That's they used to live there. <laughs> and they are known for, I'll let you take it from here. Okay. So between 1100 and 1250 is when they lived there. Their tribal name is Spanish for without water because they were able to make this a homeland mm -hmm. basically in a dry climate. The other thing, so we're on a rim trail, but there's another trail that actually passes up to 25 different cliff dwelling rooms mm -hmm. but it's closed today island trail and it's 0.9 mile loop so they were built they're saying way back in the 1100s right 1100 to 1250 and they said that they were largely undisturbed up until the 19th century and the railroad brought souvenir hunters to the area in the 1880s and the hundreds, you know, obviously theft and they did a lot of destruction and everything and it mm -hmm. wasn't until um, 1915 when it was, this area was declared a national monument to, you know, preserve what, basically what was left. Wow. But that huge span, time span. of time, they le were left undisturbed from the time that they left in 1250 mm -hmm. clear up to 19th century. Well, if I was homeless, I'd come and live one of those. What? Nobody goes over there. We can get over there. This is where they would build these one room pit houses near their fields where they employed dry farming techniques to grow corn and other crops. Your RVs don't have walls that thick, that's for sure. Wow, that's. Neither do your sticks and bricks houses. Well, I feel like this is definitely a must see stop. Absolutely, yeah. Well, we're going to head out of this place and go on to the next. Where will it be? So we're at Sunset Crater Volcano National Monument, well, entering it, and uh, it was formed by an eruption over 900 years ago. And then we'll take this scenic road that will also loop over to Wupatki National Monument. Not bad. Yeah. We're at an elevation of 8,039. 
and the temperature is currently 86 degrees. Thousand Trails, you really need to make a park <laughs> in the Flagstaff area. Beautiful. Look at that. Yeah, you passed. Can you flip it around so we can see your signature, sir? Okay. The first part of this 35 mile loop is lava flow, volcano. 19 miles further up is Bukaki, the Pueblo um, site. Okay. Sounds okay. good. Thanks. Good Thank day. you. Okay. So, also, uh, this is a campground. Yes, it is. <laughs> Fun fact there's a campground. Is that seriously from the lava? I have to admit something. When we were talking about the two craters, we were talking about the one that the meteor created and the one that the volcano created. Uh -huh. I'm thinking, you're just gonna see these two big holes or something, you know, we're talking craters. I didn't imagine it being this way. Let's go, so, let's go. I guess it just goes to show you, don't think you know what something's gonna be like before you try it. Mm -hmm. You never know what you might be missing, kinda like that box of chocolates. <laughs> Allow two and a half hours for a round trip hike. Five feet in, oh. and I already cut my toe. Um, just FYI, this lava rock is sharp. Heads up. Mm -hmm. Heads up. Heads up. Toes up. Stop that is so. It almost sounds like a metal, a hollow metal sound. Because she's amazed now. Force of you know how it moves things erupting sometime between 1040 and 1100 sunset crater is the most recent in a six million year history of volcanic activity in the flagstaff area basically flagstaff is on a bunch of volcanoes <laughs> i think it's time to leave it sounds like it's about due they are calling this the cinder cone uh -huh. reminds us of the powerful forces that shape the earth Vegetation is slowly returning to this, the landscape mm -hmm. after this erupted 900 years ago. Look how slow it's taking. I don't even know how it can actually grow in this. It's amazing how plants can grow in some of the weirdest places. We did this. Lava's Edge Trail. Okay, this is the area that we did. Okay. Yeah. But the crater itself is actually over here. Yeah. So once we get back in the car and drive, we'll probably see it over yeah. here. Yeah, okay. And the campground that's here, USFS Bonito Campground. Bonito Lava Flow. from 86 to 99. <laughs> now this is pretty neat.
that was Citadel Pueblo, yeah. Pueblan Ruins. I did say too that more of these on the outskirts were more single dwellings, whereas that one, that really big area that we saw was like a multi-family dwelling. At about 5,000 feet in elevation back there, we were around 99 degrees. Then when we get to Flagstaff, we'll see what the temperature is. That is well, 27 miles from where we are now. We're in Flagstaff. We're at 6,944 feet, and we're back at 86 degrees. Ooh. We got everything here, at least to stay alive. And the time that we share makes it all worthwhile. Got this place on. Do you feel that we got something strong? Guess what day it is? No, it's not hump day. It's our anniversary. Yay. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna go down to Old Town Cottonwood and we're gonna go to that Colt Grill. I remembered the name. <laughs> good barbecue. Yeah, very good barbecue. Sounded good to us tonight for our anniversary. So we're gonna go do that and hang out a little bit on Old Town Cottonwood and take you with us. Just finished at Colt Grill here. Very so, good. Very good. Across the street here. Again, that's a really good barbecue place if you're in the Cottonwood area. And then I'm gonna take you down here to the end of Cottonwood's uh, old downtown area and uh, show you another place that we highly recommend if you do come here. So let's go take a look at that. Pizzeria Bachi, a very good restaurant. Their food is amazing. The pizzas are amazing. If you're gluten free, we've tried it, and it's probably the best, mm -hmm. probably the, the best gluten free pizza we ever had. It's spectacular. Very good flavor. Very good. So that is probably number one. Unless you want barbecue, then go to yep. Gold Grill. They're both good. <laughs> yeah, and neither one of them are paying us to say this. Yep. We're just giving you advice. Those are our two favorite places so far. We've been to a third place here, but it was okay. We yeah. we would recommend those two places. Right next to Bocce, I guess they call it the State Bar. But kind of interesting. It's an old garage, mm -hmm. and it has a whole, they just put a concrete patio out here in front. Kind of made use of the space here. It was kind of a clever idea. Yeah, I thought so. That's it for the two places down in Old Town Cottonwood that we recommend for places to eat. In this old downtown area are a lot of little wine tasting rooms and yeah. lots of them. Seems yeah, like it's just do. this real short stretch. Since it's our anniversary, we'll tell you a little bit about Michelle and I and how we met. Michelle and I went to high school together. Actually, we grew up in the same small town ever since we were ever since we were born. <laughs> we little, we little children. Anyway, <laughs> we actually met up about 11 years ago. It was 11 years on, now July 5th, would have been our very first date. Yep. We've been together ever since for the last 11 years, dated for quite a while, and then finally decided to get married. That's our <laughs> that, that's the story of Brian and Michelle. Yeah. That's going to about wrap it up for this week. We got an anniversary to go celebrate some more. Wowzers. <laughs> Popcorn in the movie. Popcorn in the movie is what I'm talking about. What were you thinking? <laughs> dirty minded people. Well, that's not what I was thinking. <laughs> Who's dirty minded? <laughs> Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you when? Next week. Let's call it a day. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.